Hey everybody, it's Chris, and I thought I'd show you a project that I'm working on. I didn't start recording it from the beginning, um, I guess because I didn't know for sure if you'd be interested in it, but um, since I've started it, I think that it would be a really great thing to show you how to do, um, and I think it's gonna turn out really cool, so I'd love to share that part of it with you. So I have started pouring um, these resin letters. I have a K and an H here. Um, this is a mold that I purchased off of Amazon, and I will put the affiliate link down in the description of the video for you so that you can see the ones that I used. I chose this one because I felt like some of them on Amazon and other places that I've shopped too, I didn't feel like they looked very stable to me. And I thought this one seemed to have some reinforcements in it. Um, as you can see here on, this, on the back side, there's a reinforcement, and they just felt like it looked heavier and Hopefully it will turn out really beautiful. But what I did to start this, um, I purchased some counterculture casting resin and it's the UV resin. So I'm hoping that with this clear portion that I have going on the first layer, that it will not yellow. Um, I'm doing this for um, my bestie's daughter and it's a surprise, so hopefully she loves it. Um, she really loves this glitter and this is uh, glitter from counterculture DIY as well. It's called Jupiter. So what I did was I put the countercast um, resin in the bottom of it, and you can see that I poured probably about a half an inch on the bottom of it. Now this is a really thin resin when you first start out. So what I had to do was I just kind of let it sit there. Um, I probably let it sit for a couple of hours, I would guess, and to let it kind of thicken up, if you will. And then I went in and I added my glitter to the resin. And then I also purchased this gold, um, these are like chunks of glass, I guess. And I thought that that would be kind of pretty to sprinkle some on top there. And then these butterflies, um, they went in first and these are resin butterflies, um, or acetate butterflies, excuse me. I purchased these from Joann's and I was a little disappointed that I didn't get more butterflies. I guess I should have paid attention to that, but I thought they were quite pretty. And so I kind of chose this little yellow and pink one because I felt like that would kind of match with the color scheme that I'm going for, for Caitlin. So I placed those down in there. Um, I did kind of fold them in half to give them a little bit of dimension. And then I just used my little tweezers, my craft tweezers to kind of place them in there. And the hope was that it would kind of float and not set to the bottom. And that's why I waited a little bit for the resin to kind of harden up a little bit. And then that's when I sprinkled the, the little gold the little gold glass on top. For this one, for the H, these are some findings from Tim Holtz. This is just kind of a an idea of what they are. I was actually going to use some of these in this pour and I kind of forgot and had them sitting to the side, but I'm kind of a Tim Holtz fanatic and I have quite the collection of all of his little um, trinkets. So I kind of did the same thing. I really had hoped that they would float more, but I think my resin just wasn't set quite far enough for them not to kind of go down to the bottom. It would have been really cool if I could have gotten them in, at dip, different depths, but I still think it's gonna turn out pretty neat. And then I also decided to put some of the gold um, in here as well, just to kind of give it a little more interest. Now my next layer that I want to do is to put um, another layer of resin, and then I'm going to use my white armor art on this one, just to kind of give it um, kind of a little, I don't know, I kind of feel like it's going to look kind of like clouds maybe. Um, I use the white armor art when I want to create waves on my beach pores, but I think it'll also add a little bit of depth to it. And then I also have a copper armor art that I thought would be kind of cool in this one. I've not used this before, so we're going to see how this works. Um, I'm hoping it works, especially since I'm doing it on a video for you. Um, I've already got my resin mixed up, so I'm using the Artist Resin for this layer. So um, remember, for the first layer, I used the countercast. And the countercast or hard cast is kind of what you want to use when you're casting like a big object like this. Um, the Artist Resin will give it a really nice shine, but I feel like the Artist Resin is kind of what I want to use when I'm using my waves. Um, so, And this is going to be a much thinner layer, so it's not like I'm building this up to a half inch thick. So I just want to add a little bit of extra interest to it, if you will. And then the final layer will be colored resin. So I've got my resin mixed up here. It was supposed to be four ounces, but this is a five ounce cup, so I don't think it's quite, <laughs> I 
think it might be a little bit more than four ounces. So for the armor art, it doesn't take very much to add that effect to it. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit here in my medicine cups, just enough so that I can get that colored pigment in there. And then just to add kind of some swirls, if you will. I have my heat gun over here ready to go because I, I feel like it activates much better if you add some heat to it, at least the white does. I don't wanna to be too chintzy on this. And then I'm also going to pour just the clear down in here so that I have a base to kind of add that armor art to. I'm not exactly sure how much I need. I just kind of wanted a thin coating and I think it will kind of level out a little bit. I feel like my table is kind of headed downwards, but I, it should be pretty level, but it doesn't seem like it is right now. That was Riley that you just heard. And Rangers outside, Mr. Riley was neutered two days ago. So trying to keep them apart, which is not easy because they love to play together. But the vet said that I needed to keep them apart when they're outside because that's when they kind of get a little bit crazy with each other. And it has been really difficult. And this is only like day two. And she thought that we should probably do it for a week. And I was like, mm, not sure we're gonna make it a week, but we'll see. All right, so I'm just gonna, I wanna make sure that I've got enough to move my armor otter around. So I would say this might be about a quarter inch thick. I'm just trying to make sure that I've got it in the mold here and it's in all of my areas. I actually thought I was gonna have enough mixed up to work on, do a little bit of a, my other project, but I'm probably gonna have to do a little bit more for that because it doesn't look like I'm gonna have any extra, that's for sure. All right, so let me finish getting this leveled out and then um, I'll come back and show you the rest of it. All right, so I've got my resin in here. I wanna hit it with the heat gun real quick just to pop any bubbles that I have because I, my goal is for these to be pretty clear and not have air bubbles in them when we're finished. And just remember when you're working with a silicone mold, don't use a torch on it. The torch um, will ruin your mold and it will cause the mold to stick to your piece and you'll have a huge problem getting it out of the mold. So remember not to ever torch it. So I've got my little cups here with my um, resin in it for the armor art. So I've got a toothpick here. What I have learned about using armor art is that you want it pretty thick. I mean, when you think that you have enough, you should probably add a little bit more because it seems like it takes a lot to get that pigment to really work for you. You want it pretty thick in your project. And my armor art is kind of old and there we go. And very thick. So I'm just gonna mix it up into my resin here. And I did put a pretty good size glob on there and I just wanna make sure that I've got it nice and mixed up because like I said, it was a little thick. But when it's done, to me, it kind of reminds me of like, oh, I don't wanna say cotton candy, but it's kind of a, just a really thick, kind of creamy consistency, if you will. <coughs> Hello, Riley. All right, and I broke my toothpick, so I'm just gonna grab another toothpick here. All right, so this one should squeeze out. And again, I'm just gonna put a good little bit in there because I've not used the copper before, but we'll see if that's enough. And it's a metallic one, so I don't feel like that's enough because see how pale it is? It's just not quite enough yet. You can see through the cup actually. So let's add a little bit more to it. You want to be careful about adding too much of an additive or a pigment 
to resin because it will seize it up actually, but hopefully this will be okay. So let me just get this mixed up here. I still don't feel like we have enough in there. It's making me a little nervous because I don't want it to go all crazy on me, but I definitely want to see the copper metallic. I know my white is good, so it obviously takes a lot more of the metallic ones to make these look good. So as I said, I've just got a layer of um, artist resin down there right now, just so that we have something to kind of push this through. And I'm just gonna kind of take this and kind of drop some lines into my project. And hopefully this doesn't totally ruin it. I'll be very upset if it does. I still don't feel like there's quite enough copper in that, but we'll see what we get here. So just kind of putting a little bit of a design, if you will, I guess, in here. And some drops and do some, some lines through here. And like I said, I know that I want it to be fairly thick so that when I hit the heat with it, it will do something cool. I guess I'm kind of gonna form some X's here so I get this copper color throughout the project. And next I'm just gonna hit it with some heat and we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that this does not react the same way as the white does because I'm not getting like kind of that foamy effect. So let me see if I can find a little straw and try to blow on this. So I think this would have been better as like a solid layer maybe of copper. Um, let's go ahead and do the white and I think I'm gonna come back to that H because I don't love the way it looks. But let's see if we can get the effect of the white like I'm looking for. So here's my white. Like I said, it's just kind of like a marshmallow cream. That's what I was looking for. Kind of like a marshmallow cream, if you will. I know, Riley. So I kind of want this to kind of have a little bit of a cloud effect maybe. So I'm gonna see if I can kind of lay it down in a line and then we'll come back and work with it here. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit it with my heat gun. as this one gets hot, it actually starts to kind of feather out, and kind of create like a foamy effect, as you can see right here. I don't want to move this around because my resin is moving. But that's kind of what I wanted was that like ethereal kind of cottony cloud look to it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and let this sit up and then I'll come back and we'll put in um, the layer of We'll come back and we'll put the colored layer of resin on the back side of it. Um, and I think I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more of that copper to it and maybe just swirl it around with my, um, with my resin stick just because I didn't really do what I wanted it to do, that's for sure. Um, as you can see, this one, when I did heat it, it did react and it started to kind of create that 
little foamy look to it, which is what I was looking for for the copper, but maybe that's not how the copper is made. So, all right, guys, so we're gonna leave it like this and then I'll be back to show you how we're gonna put the last layer of resin in. Okay, so I'm back to do the final layer of colored resin. <clears throat> I've mixed up about one and one third cups of my culture cast resin and I've got it all mixed up. Um, there's some bubbles in there, but I'm gonna let it sit here for a second while I show you my colors. For the H, I'm going to use some counterculture mica, and this is called Teal Twinkle. It's kind of like a really deep green. Um, I think, in my opinion, teal has always been like a bluish green color. So, um, but to me, I think it kind of looks more like a hunter green. It's a very pretty color. And then for the K, this is the glitter that I used, the Jupiter glitter. And I thought I would use um, the sockeye, this little piggy pigment because I thought that was kind of a pretty color to go along with it. It's obviously kind of like a salmon color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour my resin into my cups here so that I can color it up. I wanna make sure that I have enough in here to cover um, because it'll be very hard to repeat the same color since I'm using mica. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of split this between the two and just use all of it. So I'm hoping, this is how much I mixed up the first time around. Um, so this should give me a very nice thick letter so that it will stand on its own. Cause I thought it would be kind of cool if it could sit on a shelf or on a table, whatever they decide that they want to do with it. That'd be cool on a bookshelf. They'd make very cool bookends. Okay, so I think I've got that divided up pretty good. Um, I'm gonna leave just a little bit in the bottom of my cup. This is a measuring cup that I get at the Dollar Tree and they are $1 and I use them over and over and over again. But if I leave my popsicle stick kind of down in the bottom, then when this dries, I can actually kind of wiggle it and peel the dried resin out of it. So it works really nice to be able to reuse it again. Okay, so this is probably set for about a couple of hours now since I showed you the last part. And I've kind of looked them, looked at them and I feel like the resin is pretty solid. I'll kind of show you a little bit of a close up on that. The white um, is really difficult to see on camera, um, but I think when we put the color behind it, it'll be really beautiful. But I feel like the resin is set that we've already put on there. I will be very gentle when I pour the colored resin on top just to make sure that I don't disturb that one layer that we put on there, but I think we should be okay to go ahead and add the final layer. And hopefully tomorrow I can take them out of the molds and we can see how they turned out. All right, so I'm going to start with just a, I don't know, I, I don't wanna get too crazy with my mica. I do wanna make sure that it is a nice solid color though. So I'm just gonna add about that much in and I'm gonna go ahead and stir it and we'll see what we get. It's a beautiful color though, I love the color. So when I first started to do the Shelly art technique, I had some of these really pretty mica powders that I had purchased from Counterculture and I wanted to use them in the Shelly art technique but they did not mix up like I had hoped they would. And I didn't get the color that I wanted, but I think now I realize, and I kind of thought at the time too, that it's probably because they're formulated more for resin than as a paint. And I can tell you that that is exactly why they weren't as pretty. Look at that beautiful color. And I've got my window there, so you can see the reflection with the the metallic in there, isn't that beautiful? All right, so I'm gonna set this over here and I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of slowly kind of lay this down on top of what I have there and just kind of drizzle it over my stick so that I'm not pouring directly onto what we've already put down there and hopefully that'll kind of cushion it a bit and keep that one layer that we did in place 
But I have to say, that is just a beautiful color, isn't it? And I just wanna make sure that I've got all of my areas covered. And I will heat this too to make sure that I don't have bubbles. But I think that's gonna be a really nice piece when it's all said and done. I really hope that this mold works out well too because it didn't have a lot of reviews on Amazon. So I was a little hesitant, but sometimes I think you don't know how something's going to be and sometimes you just gotta try it and maybe you're the one that has to leave the reviews. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Don't necessarily like my little drippy marks in the resin. So let's see if I can kind of smooth that out a little bit. And I will heat this, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and color up my other, ooh, I just touched that layer be below it, which is not something I wanted to do. So I better be careful about messing with that too much. Okay, so there's that one. And then let's take this guy and add our sockeye to it. This is just a really beautiful color too. It looks very orange right there, but trust me, it's a really pretty color. Um, I'm gonna add a bit to this. And hopefully it'll be beautiful. Now these are formulated for paint. And I know that people do use them in resin as well, so I think they'll be just fine. They just might mix up a little bit different than the other one did. The other thing about the Culture Cast too is that it's a thinner resin, so um, you don't get as many bubbles and it's quite easy to mix up. There we go, isn't that a pretty color? So I'm gonna make sure I've got it all mixed up here so I don't end up with a bunch of clear in the bottom. Yeah, I think that's lovely. I don't think I wanna put any more color in there. Let me just put my lid back on my pigment here. So the micas and the pigments can get kind of expensive when you start to invest in them. So I always take very good care and make sure that I'm not leaving things open. Okay, and again, just going to kind of lay this down gently on top of the other layer that's there. As I said, I mixed up um, one and a third cups of resin. So basically they each got two thirds of a cup of resin on the first layer where I laid the pieces down in there. And then I would say the middle layer was probably about two ounces for each letter. And again, I've got some really crazy looking things back here. Just gonna kind of do a little bit of a swirl and give it a little bit nicer finish on the back. And then we'll go ahead and pop the bubbles. I'm trying to be careful not to hit that clear layer that we had put down before. Um, so anyway, first layer was about a two thirds of a cup of the casting resin. Second layer was about two ounces with the armor art mixed in. And then this final layer is two thirds of a cup. And I don't have them full, but I, I honestly don't feel like I need to fill them all the way. I think, in my opinion, that's a bit of a waste. I think as long as they're thick enough to stand up, I'll be happy with it. So I'm just gonna use my heat gun and we'll pop the bubbles.
And because it's a thinner layer or a thinner consistency, or a thinner viscosity, the bubbles pop quite easily too. I have to say, I really, really, really love that teal. The teal twinkle from Counterculture. I will put a link down below too for um, for you to go to the Counterculture website because I did use a lot of their products in um, this project. I always use Counterculture resin. It is by far my favorite and the one resin that I've used that does not cause breakouts. Um, I've had allergic reactions to other ones and I've had hives on my arms and um, yeah, it wasn't pretty. So I absolutely love Counterculture and I will recommend it forever because I just, I don't have the issues that I've had with other ones. Please always make sure you're wearing nitrile gloves and also make sure that you're wearing a respirator. I don't have a respirator on right now because I wouldn't be able to talk to you, but please be sure that you're always using a respirator when you're working with resin. Um, <clears throat> but as I said, I used a lot of counterculture products. Um, it's a great company. It's here in the States. It's in Missouri. Um, I just, I love their products. I've not ever bought anything that I didn't like. I mean, they have some beautiful glitters and Obviously, this mica powder, this teal twinkle, holy cow, it's beautiful, guys. So, um, just really love the things that they have. And so, I'll always use their products. Um, the, I, you can't really see the mat that I have laying on my table, but I have a big silicone mat from Counterculture that um, I'm laying on my table now so that when I do resin, it'll just peel right off. But this is finished up for right now. Um, I kind of want to show you up close what this guy looks like isn't that a beautiful color though so we're gonna let these sit here I'm really hoping I've never done these before so you and I will see them together when I unmold them but I really hope that they turn out beautiful I'm excited about I'm excited about the project so we're gonna let these guys sit here and um probably sit for I don't know Probably till tomorrow afternoon-ish. It's about four o'clock here. So, or maybe tomorrow morning we'll be able to take them out because it'll be like over 12 hours. I've not worked done a lot with the counter culture. So we'll pop back on tomorrow and see how these turned out. So it's been 24 hours since we put that final color layer in the um, letter molds. And you can see they're pretty thick. I would say they're probably about an inch to an inch and a quarter thick. And this is the back side of the letter. Got a little gold flake on there. And let's see what we've got. This is, hopefully this comes out really beautiful. So I'm just gonna softly pry these away from the sides just to kind of release it from the mold. And then I'll pop it up from the bottom, I think. It feels like it's releasing nicely. All right. never done a letter this size so here we go I don't want to reveal the front side until we can see it together a little bit trickier to get it out of the spaces in between the K I think Gonna take my mold and pop it back into place. And it's ready for the next pour. Got some little scraps that I need to clean off of the back sides, but that's okay. Are you ready to see it? Okay, that turned out pretty darn cool. The butterflies are really pretty in there. So I've got a butterfly here, and then there's another little one up here. I think that was a really good color of resin to choose for the glitter that I used. I have to say my white did not turn out as I had hoped it would, but I do think it added another layer of interest and a little more depth to it. All in all, I think that turned out really pretty and I think she's gonna love it. 
really happy with um, with that mold too. That turned out really nice. Okay, so let's take the H apart and see what we have. I have to say the challenging part is the, the part that does come up in the letter, but just trying to kind of gently remove it because when you pay $10 for a mold, you definitely want to be able to use it more than once. Just kind of working my way around here. I guess we'll do the same thing we did with the K and just kind of peel it back and work its way out. I could flip this over and probably get it out a little bit easier, but I do want it to kind of be a surprise because I think that's kind of the cool part about this is the reveal. I'm just seeing what it looks like. Okay, there we go. Pop that little guy back in place. Good as new, set that to the side. And are we ready? Here we go. And there it is, right side up. Oh, that's very cool. So I really love these pieces in here. I will say though that I'm not sure if, I don't know. Like I wish I could have gotten them to float at different levels. Like this one is kind of slightly different. I think it would have been very cool if they would have been at different levels. But here it is on this side and you can see kind of those little gold chunks that I put in there and then the different pieces of metal. I think it's really cool. Um, this little tag says simplify, simplify. I really like it. And I actually, the copper kind of turned out pretty cool. And what I did with that was just to swirl it around with a toothpick. So um, that, that turned out pretty neat too. Let me see if I can get the light on it so you can kind of see it's really, that really is a beautiful color, that teal twinkle mica. And then here it is on the end. So these are plenty thick enough to stand on their own. But I think they turned out really beautiful. So I do know that some people will go back and put another coat of artist resin on top. Some people said that the culture cast was not as shiny as the artist resin, but um, I beg to differ because I think that's just beautiful and I, I don't think it's anything but shiny. So these were the molds that we used to create these letters. Um, I purchased them on Amazon. I will put that affiliate link down below um, that'll take you straight to the letters. I know um, they have every letter available. Um, I just have the H and the K, but I honestly, I was going to order more and then I thought, gosh, you know, I was kind of afraid to because I wasn't sure how they were going to stand up, but they did, I think they did very well. And I do like, as I said before, these actually had some support to them that I didn't see on some of the other ones and there isn't anything wrong with them. So I did watch a um, video from Artsy Mad Woman on YouTube, and she suggested using duct tape to get all these little pieces off of your molds, um, like these little pieces of resin that are right here. You can kind of see some little chunks there. So she suggests using duct tape just to clean out all the little pieces so that they're ready to go for the next pour. But as I said, I'll put the link down below in the description for the molds. If you have any questions about these, please let me know. Um, I will be changing the name of my YouTube channel to Liquid Art. I did put that at the beginning of the video as well, but just kind of wanted to mention that. It's been um, Chris Danielson, and I'm not Danielson anymore, so I think I'm going to just go ahead and change that to my business name. But um, if you have any questions... So I will be changing the name of my YouTube channel to Liquid Art. That's the name of my business um, since I'm not Chris Danielson anymore and haven't been for two years as of today. If you have any questions about the resin letters, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm happy to help if I can. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.